Well, it's now mid-February and the frigid air from the polar vortex has even spilled out onto the west coast of Canada, dropping our usually mild winter temps down under the freezing mark. Instead of the regular steady stream of Pacific Ocean storms bringing cool and wet weather, but at least above freezing temperatures, we are now having snow and ice. So I thought this would be a perfect time to go over the things I've added to the RV to help keep us warm and dry this winter. In past years, we have just pointed the rig south and drove it, drove it until it was warm. But this year, that option is off the table and we found ourselves staying put here on Vancouver Island. So in the late summer and early fall, I installed many different products to prep the RV for cold weather living. As I installed most of the items, I published a post video about them, which I'll link back to. Just click on each headline in the blog post to view. This post will update, uh, update you on how the product has performed for us over the last couple of months of use, particularly during this recent cold snap. So let's start. Easy snap skirting. One thing I decided to do was skirt around the bottom of the fifth wheel trailer. RV skirting has several benefits with the primary one being the prevention of frozen plumbing pipes, valves and tanks, etc. By installing the skirt all around the outside, you can trap a column of warm air under the RV. Uh, electric heaters or light bulbs can be added as the temps drop lower to put more heat under there. Furthermore, the skirting saves money on heating costs and provides extra space to store items out of the weather. For my fifth wheel, I even framed a little shed under the front of the overhang and covered it with skirting using a zippered access door. I chose the, to install the DIY kit from a company called Easy Snap for the skirting. The kit came with rolls of their durable diamond weave vinyl skirt material and namesake plastic fasteners. I like the Easy Snap skirting as it could be pulled off and on quickly and was compact and will be lightweight to store. Overall, the Easy Snap skirting has performed well. I find without any heater under the RV, it stays at about three to four Celsius warmer than the outside temps. When I add a small 900 watt heater, the temp jumps up to eight to nine Celsius. For example, as I write this, it's negative 3.5 Celsius, which is about 25.7 Fahrenheit outside, but it's plus 5.5 Celsius or 42 Fahrenheit under the RV. Most importantly, it has handled the high winds of our coastal winter storms. We've had six or seven big storms, winds up to 80 kilometers an hour, which is 50 miles per hour, and one or two up to 100 kilometers an hour, which is 60 miles an hour. The skirting held in place, and I only had a couple of snaps break one time when a section of the fifth wheel overhang billowed out during one of the huge gusts. One extra thing I added was a run of 3M no residue duct tape all around the top of the skirting. This has helped keep rain from running down the sidewall and getting in behind the skirting and reinforced the snaps. I've tested the tape after being on a few months and like advertised, no residue was left. It's also held in place well. Next on my list was a heated fresh water hose. Even here on the BC South Coast, we see enough below freezing nights and the odd sustained cold snap to make it a worthwhile purchase. A person could just use the onboard fresh water tank or add heat tape and foam to a regular RV water hose, but I decided to spend the money and get a quality heated hose. I went for the Camco heated hose with a built-in power regulation strip. No external thermostat to mess with. The hose automatically adjusts to provide just enough heat to keep it from freezing. The Camco hose is made in the USA and has a three-year warranty and is rated to a low of minus 40. So far, I've had zero issues with leaks and no freeze-ups. I leave it plugged in all the time and it automatically does the job. I was encouraged when one of the park maintenance workers actually commented that it was a great hose and they rarely see campers having freeze-up problems when using the blue ones. A dehumidifier isn't likely required for drier inland winter locations, but here on the coast it's a must-have. It's by far the best investment I've made for the cold weather here. The average outside humidity here is so high that condensation develops inside poorly insulated RVs, a very common problem. The condensation can eventually cause wood rot and mold growth. That's concerning to one's health and can lead to expensive repairs to fix the problems. I picked out a 19 pint desiccant type dehumidifier made by a company called Ivation. It had several positive reviews from other RVers and boaters in similar winter climate conditions. 
Unlike the compressor type dehumidifiers, desiccant type put out warm air as they heat a spinning desiccant wheel. Perfect for cool damp weather, they are lighter and smaller than comparably sized compressor style units. The drawback is they won't work well in hot moist climates like say Florida in the summer. The little libation is performed superbly at removing the moisture from our RV. I have its drain hose plumbed to the outside and it's almost a constant drip. Our inside humidity stays low at about 30 to 40 percent and we've had no condensation issues this winter. I'm able to keep the roof fence closed if I want to to help keep the heat in. Even after a hot shower the bathroom mirror doesn't fog up. Another perk is our bath towels last much longer between washings since they dry so quickly. Without the dehumidifier they wouldn't dry thoroughly between showers and soon sour. The only complaint with this Ivation 19 pint dehumidifier has been the occasional rattling or chattering gear noises as it runs. I've read in other reviews of this being a complaint as well. I have heard the company is pretty good and will stand behind the warranty so I'll have to see how it goes. We'll keep using it for the rest of this winter and decide if it needs to be replaced. Portable electric heaters. Because our Keystone Cougar 30 foot trailer is only a 30 amp RV. I've had to be a little picky about the heaters I use and wear. I use a pair of low wattage heaters, usually one at each end of the rig to balance things out. I place the 700 watt oil heater in the living room area and a 900 watt fan heater in the bedroom during the day. The dehumidifier is located midway and puts out about 350 watts. Anne also uses a heated throw blanket if she needs to bo a boost in warmth. At night we use the fan heater and put it on the kitchen counter and Anne uses her electric blanket. This electric heating setup has allowed us to use very little propane over the last few months, only around three 30 pound cylinders worth. Overall the winter here has been milder than expected. That was up until this week when the polar vortex hit and has plunged the temperatures much lower than usual. I've placed the 900 watt fan heater under the skirting at these lower freezing temps and also run the RV gas furnace to prevent the RV plumbing from freezing. I have the RV gas furnace thermostat set for 15 Celsius, about 59 Fahrenheit during the night, and 18 Celsius, 64.4 Fahrenheit during the daytime. Outside temps are currently averaging around freezing during the day and minus 5 Celsius, 23 Fahrenheit at night. Our pro propane use during this cold snap is now averaging about a 30 pound tank per week. Vent covers. Our reef, RV roof vents are a significant source of heat loss in an RV as warm air rises and pools the ceiling. To prevent it, I stuff insulated vent cushions inside them. Being on the rainy coast, my rig is also equipped with outside plastic covers that allow the vents to be open when raining. Those have proved useful to keep the snow off the vent lids and prevent ice ups. For the rooftop air conditioner, I added a vinyl winter cover and have temporarily installed some reflective spoil insulation above the inside vents to block out cold air. Window film. Windows are another big heat loss in an RV. Thankfully, we have double pane windows, but even so, they can get quite cold. One way to combat this is with a plastic shrink insulation to provide an insulating air barrier. I chose a 3M company kit and applied it to both our bedroom windows. We don't spend any time during the day in there and we rarely open the blinds anyway. With the window film plus a layer of reflective foil and the nightshades, any heat loss and drafts are significantly reduced. I decided not to do our main living area windows as we enjoy the view and like to get as much light as possible during the day. The coast can be quite gloomy in the winter so we soak up as much daylight as we can get. Area rugs and mats. Years ago I ripped out the OEM RV carpeting. We had dogs at the time and it was an immense pain to clean and after a few short years it was in bad shape. We ended up going with a vinyl flooring and never looked back to carpeting. The vinyl is much easier to clean and since we were always wintering down south cold floors weren't a big concern. Flash forward to this winter and the cold floors are now a problem. We solved the problem by investing in various throw rugs and bath mats with foam underlay. It made a big difference on our feet and added another layer of protection. Power meter. Unfortunately, we only have a single 30 amp outlet to work with here, so I decided to install a Droke digital amp voltage meter on the main input power line. Our RV surge protector system also has one, but it's in a place that's hard for us to easily glance at. 
With the new amp gauge right in plain view below the kitchen, Ann and I know how many amps are currently that we're currently using and whether we need to temporarily shut off a heater or two to use a high wattage item like the microwave. This prevents us from blowing the main breaker. So far the little Droke amp meters worked flawless. LP gas level gauges. Another meter I added to the RV for the winter was an LP gas level gauge. I ordered a kit off Amazon from a company called Mopeka. This kit comes with a pair of wireless sensors magnetically attached to the propane cylinder's bottom and broadcasts the levels via Bluetooth. The results can be viewed on the included LED level meter or smart app for your phone. I found the readings were surprisingly accurate. It was handy to keep track of the LP gas levels from the comfort of my chair. Unfortunately, one of the sensors has failed and I took it apart and diagnosed that the main IC chip partially shorted out after a tank became frosty. After that, the readings were off and the sensor would eat a battery in less than a day. I contacted the company explaining the issue and hoped to get a new sensor under warranty. And update, the company is sending me a replacement sensor for free, so we'll see how it goes. I'm planning maybe to cover the board with a special coating to help it to maybe ward off this problem in the future. And finally, an Outland Fire Bowl and gifted me for my birthday in September has been a happy addition. It really helps take the chill off on those days when it's calm and pleasant outside but a little nippy still. It's awesome to be able to sit back with a warm beverage and a fire and admire our beautiful estuary view. So there you go. Those are the 10 things I've done to help keep the rig a little more pleasant during this winter stay. Um, if you want to see things more in detail, I'll link to the blog post and that will have links back to each of my uh, post videos and reviews of each product. Till next time, this is Ray from loveyourv.com. Stay warm everyone. Cheers folks.